What's up, everyone? You know what time it is. It is time for another episode of A Hymn for Him. I am your host, King Worship, and I just want to say to you, welcome. Welcome, everyone, to this episode. I know last week I said that I was going live. And yes, I had planned to go live, but it slipped me that I had a previous engagement already um, planned uh, where it would make it impossible for me to go live. So I have to put off my life for another time. I had to cancel it. And here I am today with another pre-recorded episode. It's gonna be fun, it's gonna be informative. Come on, it's gonna be something someone needs to see and really get into. So remember to like, share, and leave a comment. Before I go into tonight's session, I just wanna shout out a couple persons who have been supporting me, who have been on the ball with each episode. I just wanna shout you out right now uh mr courtney williams thank you thank you thank you for your support and your encouragement i want to shout out abdullah my new co-worker and friend i want to shout out natasha jeffrey simon i want to shout you out as well pam everyone who has been encouraging me and everyone who has been tuning in or you know looking at the recorded videos every sunday grateful for your support and your love i'm gonna add something new to uh this series so every sunday i would give a shout out to the persons who like and share and leave a comment so once you like share and leave a comment i'm gonna shout you out every sunday so remember to do that all right so we're gonna go into our first hymn tonight and this hymn would be sung by one of my crew members. <laughs> yes, Kadero Telesford will be presenting this hymn. And can it be? And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood? Died he for me who caused him pain? For me who him to death pursued? Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, shouldest die for me? This hymn was written by Charles Wesley in 1738, and it was written from his personal conviction. This was the hymn that he celebrated his conversion to Christianity. Charles Wesley wrote about 6,000 hymns in his lifetime. But this hymn was his best love and he was well known for this hymn in particular. The story behind this hymn says that he was visiting a friend one day, Mr. Bray, and while on that visit, his friend's sister was praying in the house and she was praying loudly and it caught his attention. It actually caught his soul's attention and awakened something within him. That prayer actually drove Charles Wesley to conviction. And it sparked a thirst in him to get to know Christ. From there, he wrestled with the words that he heard until finally he came to his faith in Christ. Each stanzas of this hymn are very poetic and poignant and it speaks clearly of the justification that we have in Christ. Here to present to you, and can it be, is one of my friend, Codero Telesford. Greetings in the name of our Lord and soon coming King. Wow, I am so excited for the return of our God. I am thankful for this amazing opportunity where I can share with you my favorite hymn. And you know, it's called, And Can It Be? And you might ask yourself, why is that your favorite hymn? But you know, amazing love. How can it be that our God should die for me? So this morning, this afternoon, or whatever time it is where you're at, 
I just want to minister to your spirit, minister to your soul, and I trust that your hearts will be blessed. And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood? Died he for me who caused his pain For me who him in death pursued Amazing love, how can it be That thou, my God, shouldst die for me Amazing, Amazing love, how, how can, can it be that thou, my God, shouldest die for me? And indeed, it is an amazing love that our God has, that he died for you and he died for me. God bless you. Welcome back. Thank you, Kadero, for presenting that hymn to us. And Kadero is all the way in Taiwan doing his studies. All the best. Our second hymn for tonight is presented by another great friend of mine from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And his name is Kevin Glasgow. And he is one that is also tuning in to uh, these episodes. And he's here to present our second hymn tonight, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. We know this hymn, but the story behind the hymn, we don't know. And this is where I am going to enlighten you. So What a Friend We Have in Jesus was written by a preacher. His name was Joseph M. Scriven, and it was written in 1855. It was written as a poem, first of all, and we see that over the past episode, most of these hymns were written as poems. But this was particularly written um, by Joseph Scriven to comfort his mother. The music was written by Charles C. Converse in 1868. He was born in Ireland to a well-off family. So he was well educated, you know, he, he lived a lush life. Story behind the hymn says, he, he fell in love with a young lady who he was going to get married to. And the day before his wedding, they went strolling and so forth. And they were walking over a bridge with a river underneath. And this young lady was on a horse and she fell off the horse, fell into the water and drowned to death yes so the day before his wedding his beloved died this incident devastated him and it caused him to wander so he wandered for the rest of his life he wandered and he traveled around the world and then it all his travels led him to canada and so he came to Canada in Ontario, where I am today, in Ontario. He settled there and he started to get his life back on track. And here comes another love. He fell in love with another young lady who, who he had decided to get married to. But sadly again, before he can wed this young lady, she died of pneumonia. And you know, this, was, this is a second blow he was hit with. Everyone he fell in love with died. Even though these were events that shook him, it didn't stop him from being that great person that he was. He was known to be a humanitarian who helped the widows, who helped uh, the poor and the destitute, those that really need help. He would use his finances to assist and even his skills and talents um, for free. On an occasion where Joseph became ill, a friend visited his house, you know, just to cheer him up. And he saw this poem that was written. It was at his bedhead and he read it and inquired about it. And Joseph said he wrote it with God for his mother who was still in Ireland. On August 10th, 1886, 
Joseph's body was pulled from a river in Ontario. It was unknown the exact day that he passed. Because of his humanitarian work, he was honored for his efforts with two erected monuments with those words from that poem engraved. And today, we know that him as what a friend we have in Jesus. Welcome Kevin Glasgow as he present to you this hymn. What a friend we have in Jesus All our sins and griefs to bear What a privilege to carry Every, 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 everything to God in prayer Oh what peace we often forfeit Oh what needless pains we bear All because we do not carry Every, 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 every thing to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be. Take it, take it, take it to the Lord, the Lord in breath. God bless you. Thank you so much, Kevin, for taking time off of your busy schedule to be a part of a him for him. I'm grateful. So that is it for this week, everyone. We have come to an end of another episode for a him for him. For sure, I'll be going live for next week's episode. Um, I don't think I have anything on the schedule. So thank you so much for your support. Thank you for your love. I am King Worship, your host, reminding you to worship the King in spirit and in truth. Ta-ta! <laughs>